What is America? I like the answer to that question given in the words of the only black U.S. Senator since Reconstruction, my friend Edward Brook. America is people. And though Americans may be of a different color, of a different religion, of different political persuasions, Americans are still one people, living under one flag within and working with the pursuit of a common pursuit of the ideals under which this country was founded. It is with great pleasure that I present to you Dr. Wendell P. Whalum and the Ebenezer Baptist Choir. Dr. Whalum.
we welcome each of you to the 50th birthday celebration for the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Practically all great success stories or achievements familiar to us had their beginnings because someone dared to dream. And in most cases, the dream was realized and the dreamer was helped along the way because others cared. The Bible tells us of dreamers. And of course, the most conspicuous, conspicuous was Joseph. He told his dreams to his brothers and his brothers hated him for his dreams. And of course, you know the rest of that biblical story. From Socrates to Edison and up until today, every forward step taken by mankind through revolving centuries, every great success, every great advance by humanity towards improving the quality of life for all has been led by a valiant dreamer. The Bible tells us that Moses with dying eyes saw a star that blazed in the promised land. The Bible tells us that the radiance of an eternal star led three wise men to the manger in Bethlehem. Kipler announced the laws of unchanging spheres. Dr. Charles Drew founded the blood bank. Newton watching the apple fall. Carver, Dr. George Washington Carver, lifting the lowly peanut to prominence in agribusiness. Each of these great persons looked beyond into the future. Dr. Martin Luther King, Junior, of course, is the greatest dreamer of our times. And those of us who had the honor and pleasure of being associated with him recall that on many occasions, he cited one person as a mentor and a great source of personal inspiration. And that one person is Dr. Benjamin Mays, who will give us our invocation. May we bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we have assembled here this afternoon to thank thee for the life of Martin Luther King, Jr., whose life and death are inspiring millions throughout the world. We thank thee for Coretta Scott King, whose leadership has made these days possible. We thank thee for Daddy King and all members of the King family. Now, God, we thank thee for the President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, whose leadership in the world is awesome, challenging, and inspiring. God, our President cannot carry these responsibilities alone. He needs the support of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, and the people of the United States of America. Help us to understand that thou has given the president a brilliant mind and a good heart a combination that is rare among the leaders of this world. Oh God, give the people the insight, the wisdom, to know that our president did not create the problem facing us, inflation, 
antagonism between Egypt and Israel, race, reorganization of the judiciary, apartheid in South Africa, trouble in Cambodia and Vietnam, the delayed recognition of the People's Republic of China, unemployment, human rights, and the Panama Canal problem. We thank thee, God, that we have a president who has done something about several of these aggravating problems and is working on the others. It might well be that thou, O oh God, has called Jimmy Carter to the presidency for such a time as this. Thou, O oh God, called Jesus Christ from Bethlehem of Judea to save all mankind. It might well be that thou hast called Jimmy Carter from Plains, Georgia, to lead America at this point in time. And at the end of his term as president, may we be nearer to the solution of all of these vexing problems. These are our petitions. Please grant them. O oh Lord our God, amen. Four years ago in January, a little black girl left the Baptist Church in New York and made the short trip to Broadway. She left as Stephanie and thrilled millions on Broadway as Dorothy, and she will share her talent with us at this time. How sweet the 
sound that saved the wretch like me. It was grace that brought me saved thus far, and grace shall lead me. What can we say about the man I'm about to ask to come before us? Dad, Martin Luther King Sr. Thank you very much. I suppose the rest of my stay on this earth, this sort of thing will be done everywhere I go. I receive this kind of ovation. And I want you to know that I'm awfully humbled about this. Now, I can get full. It used to be hard for me to cry. I was rough and brutally frank. But I've had to meet so much, now it's easy for me to cry. The little lady that just sang the hymn that's going to get us home, Amazing Grace, touched my very heart so that I'm full. I'm honored and happy and privileged to be on this podium with the greatest president in the world. And I mean this. I proved it. And I'm going to keep on proving it. I'm with him and I'm going to be with him. I'm not going to let nobody, nothing, turn me around. I said all over the country as I spoke for this man that I knew Jimmy Carter. I knew him close up. I know his heart. I know he's a good church man. I know he's a good Baptist. Now I've had to answer some of the criticisms, and I think it took somebody like me to answer some of them. 
Now you know what you're going to do with a president going in the White House talking about born again. I say, you better go get born again as quick as you can. Don't you go in hell. <laughs> it's a joy to have our president here today on this 50th anniversary celebration of our son, Martin Luther King, Jr. Now his mother says that I am his dad and I believe what she said. <laughs> and then she told me when it happened. <laughs> it was late one night. But for this pleasantry and laughter, let me say as I go to my seat, Dr. Mays said so well in this brilliant prayer, the president needs our support, our backing. He needs it. And I hope that we are going to give the president continually, our support back home as he carries on, not only in the White House, but across this world. My, one of my grandchildren said to me, and I'm happy to say all of them have got good minds all around, and she said, what got all these telephones around here? And I had to explain to her what this meant. I said, honey, the president, whether he's on the ground or in the air or in any building, you, you've got to have access immediately to what's happening in our nation. And I said, baby, the president the Navy and the Army is his. Are you listening? And I said, may get so tight that he'll have to declare war up in the air. <laughs> Which I hope won't have to happen, but he's got to have that access. So that's why you've got all these phones around here and, and all these secret service and these doors, we, we got to do everything we can to preserve the protection and the life of our president. You know that some folks don't like us, know how. And we got to remember that. Hate is still in our world. And I would that I could get you to come on and go with me. I refuse to stoop low enough they hate any man. Let him be black, white, rich, or poor. And I'm every man's brother. I hope you're mine. Now, I'm going to stop, son. I oughtn't to do it. <laughs> I'm just at the point of preaching a little bit. I know we're happy to have our senior citizen, uh, senator of Georgia here today, Senator Talmadge. Won't you just stand and let us see you? <laughs> and our representative, I know they're going to present them to you. Our representative, he's powerful. 